Let's look at another finite state machine design example. And in this situation, we'll design a uh, simple bending machine. And we'll walk all the way from the beginning, the uh, word description, all the way to the uh, final logic diagram. So let's take a look at what we're actually trying to design here. So this is the word description. We are going to create this simple bending machine. And we're going to have some system. We're going to have these two mechanical things that will dispense a bottle of water and another mechanical system which will assert or dispense a, a coin, a quarter. And the way it's going to work is if you send a signal to the bottle dispenser, a bottle of water will come out. If you spend, assert a signal called change over to the coin return, a quarter will come out. And what we're going to do is we're going to sell bottles of water for 75 cents. Okay? We are going to have an, a mechanical system on the front end which can take either a dollar or a quarter. Now, if you took a dollar, if it only took dollars, you wouldn't need a finite state machine. You would just take the dollar in, you would dispense a bottle of water and give a quarter, and you would be done. That would be a combinational logic circuit. It would actually be two combinational logic circuits to produce dispense and change. However, we are also going to to allow quarters to be given. And so in order to get to 75 cents, we're going to have to keep track of how many quarters were put in. So when they put in one quarter, we need to have knowledge that one quarter was put in. Then we have two quarters put in. We need to have knowledge that two were put in, and then three, et cetera, et cetera. But we only get a signal from the mechanical money receiver that says a quarter came in. So the state machine is needed in order to track how many of these quarters were input. So let's go ahead and let's name our signals. The inputs are going to be DN and QN. And yeah, those, those may not be the greatest names, <clears throat> but it stands for dollar in and quarter in. The outputs are going to be called dispense and change. And let's just, let's go ahead and start designing this. So let's go to immediately to the state diagram. And what we're going to do, actually, let's get it all on the screen because that'll, we'll have the, the system on the screen and the state diagram. So we're going to have a state, which I came up with, uh, we'll call it weight. And what we're going to do is just wait there if, as long as there's nothing, nothing happening, okay? And you will transition. Another thing that you can do here is to minimize the number of, uh, or the crowdedness of a state diagram is to not put transitions in when you don't get an input asserted. So it's, it's I don't draw an arrow that says stay here when QN is equal to zero and DN is equal to zero. I just leave it out. So it's implied that I stay in the state. I only show the transition edges or transition arrows when I actually have an input asserted. So let's think about what would happen if I'm in this state and somebody put a dollar in. What state do I go to? Well, actually what I do is I just return to the same state, but I needed a transition arrow to show that I was going to have a different output condition. Because when someone put a dollar in, I needed to know, I needed to assert dispense and I needed to assert change. Now, when I was not getting inputs, I would basically go back to wait, except that it's implied by not putting it here that dispense and change were unasserted or not asserted. So that would be the situation where I dispensed a dollar when somebody put a, or dispensed a water bottle when someone put a dollar in. Okay. What about quarters? Well, if I saw the quarter be asserted, I would go to a, a state called 25 cents. And then if I got another quarter, I would go to 50 cents. And then if I got another quarter, I would then go back to wait, and I would dispense a water bottle. Now, notice I didn't give change because uh, they put in exactly 75 cents. Okay, so you can see some limitations of this machine. First of all, it doesn't take any other type of money. And second of all, if you put 50 cents in and then decide you didn't want the water, we're not going to return the money. Okay, there's no button on there that's going to say give, change, give them their change back. So this is a very simple, simple, uh, simple uh, vending machine. Here is our state transition diagram, or state transition table. We have our current state, Q and D in, which are our inputs. Next state, dispense and change. And we know, and we're just going to simply list out all of the possible states. Notice that the inputs in this situation, we have two of them now. So this is, uh, the table is a little bit bigger, but we're going to list out all possible values for the inputs that it can take on. Notice that we never allow the condition of both a dollar and a quarter to come in. We don't handle that in the table. So we'll just skip that for now. So 000110. Notice that when we're in the 25 cent condition, we don't care what DN is because if we're not going to allow a dollar to be input, so we just have the money receiver, you know, return it. So we'll just ignore that case. So we're simplifying the design. 
And then notice when we're in the 50 cent state, again, we ignore the dollar. So we basically put out you know, where we're going and what the outputs need to be, and this matches that state diagram. So now what we're ready to do is we're ready to start synthesis. So I want to first synthesize the state memory. And the first step in that is assigning the state codes. So we're going to do the step called state encoding. And to do that, we assign the state codes. So let's just do binary again, just to keep it simple. So we're going to go ahead and list our three states, weight, 25 cents, and 50. And we'll just assign them a binary count, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. We could have done any arbitrary state encoding approach, but we just decided let's just keep it simple. So now we'll go to our table and update it. And now what we need to do is we need to make room in here for our state variable names. So we're not done, we're not done doing state memory synthesis yet. We assign the codes. We need to know how many flip-flops to use, which in this case is two, one for each bit of the state code. And then we need to label the state variables. So I've got one state variable associated with the current state, or two state variables. I need q1 cur and q0 cur. So I need one state variable to represent each column of information, each bit in the state code. And then over here, I came up with the names q1 next and q0 next to represent the next state codes. So that was the final piece. I needed to, number one, assign the state codes. Number two, decide how many flip-flops that corresponds to. That's easy. It's just two flip-flops, one for each bit in the state code. And three, I needed to come up with my state variable names, both for current state, the current state bits, and the next state bits. All I do at this point is I insert the values for the current state and the next state. So I actually put the codes in here. And I went ahead and completed the table. Okay, so I went ahead and put in the additional potential codes for QN and DN. And what I ended up doing is I just said, let's just, when we, whenever that happens, just stay in the current state, if that ever happened, and just don't put anything on the outputs. So that allowed me to kind of complete the table. So I actually have four, you know, rows for each input. And, and again, it's just, I'm adding in this code right here. And all I did is I'm going to design the behavior to stay. So this code right here, this code right here, and this code right here. And it's just going to stay in its current state, and it'll output zeros on the outputs. Okay, so that's the functionality we're going to do. All right, that's state memory. Let's now do the next state logic. So now we're going to do the next state logic. We look at the state transition table and we say, where is the next state logic? Well, it's these two columns right here. I need to create two circuits, one for Q1 next and one for Q0 next. And when I do that, I'm going to synthesize these and I'm going to look at what the inputs are. So what are the inputs that will influence what the output Q1 next is? Well, it turns out it's going to be the, th the two current state bits, current state variables, and the QN and DN lines. Again, look at how nice this came out. It's a perfect binary count, and that's by, not by accident. That's, we chose binary state encoding, and we put the inputs on the right. So it came out to be a perfect binary count. We have, again, we don't have every possible four-bit input code associated with these outputs, so we can either use don't cares or, or we can just set it to zero. But we want to build two circuits. So we're going to build them. Let's go straight into a K-map. Let's go straight into a K-map, and we will create the logic for Q1 next. So we're going to take this and go 0, 0, 0, 0. So we went 0, 0, 0, 0. And then we went 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And then 1, 1, 0, 1. And for all the other possible input codes, just don't care. So then we circle the prime input against. We do the same thing for Q0 next, which is right here. We're producing the circuit to produce that column from our transition table. We go ahead and pop that into KMAP, and we create our logic expressions. So the logic expressions come out to be this. And so they're, they're big ones. They're big logic, big logic expressions. But it's, you know, it's a big circuit. And then we're ready to do the output logic synthesis. But well, before we do that, we've got to look at our table and say, what are we trying to synthesize? Well, we need to build a circuit for, the, for dispense to produce the dispense output. And we need a circuit to, di to create the change output. So from that table, what we're going to do is we will then synthesize the output logic. So here's the output logic synthesis. I put those directly into 
K maps, and notice there's there's not a lot of ones in here. Same thing with change. So I come up with these two logic expressions right there. And now I'm ready to create. I have all my logic expressions. I know how many D flip flops I need. I'm ready to build the logic circuit or the logic diagram. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to put down my state memory. So here's my state memory. And notice that it's more than just it's more than just the flip-flops. It's labeling the it's labeling the current state codes and the next state codes or the variable, the nets. Because each of these nets needs to have it needs to have a name, okay? So we know where it is. So I'm going to use this flip-flop here to hold the Q1 next and Q1 cur variables. And then over here, I'm going to use this one to do the Q0 next and the Q0 cur. Now notice the current state variables come out on the Q outputs, and the, Q, and the next state variables come into the inputs. Now let's, let's enter our next state logic, which is two combinational logic circuits that produce Q1 next and Q0 next. And those came directly from the logic expressions from our K-maps. And then finally, we need the output logic, which is going to be two circuits, one that produces dispense, one that produces change, and they're combinational logic circuits directly from the logic expressions we derived from the decay map. And then when you look at the final circuit here, the inputs are QN and DN, which stands for quarter in and DN, dollar in. You have a clock coming in, which clocks all the D flip-flops, and you have two outputs called dispense and change. So that's the final logic diagram for this finite state machine.